Hey, hey, everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at the price ceiling diagram, which is also known as the maximum price diagram. And of course, this diagram would fall underneath the price control section, which is a part of government intervention underneath the IB uh, course syllabus. The interesting thing, and I always say this to students, is the price ceiling, it actually necessitates two types of of intervention. The first is the intervention that creates the ceiling or the maximum price, which is ultimately going to create excess demand or a shortage in the marketplace. And the government's going to have to get involved again to solve the problem. And they can do it in three main ways. And we'll take a look at what might be the maximum one. Okay, so a price ceiling um, or a maximum price is a situation where the government sets a maximum price, which is below the equilibrium price, which then prevents the producers from raising the price above it. These are sometimes known as ceiling prices because the, the, the price isn't allowed to get above the ceiling. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. What do you do with it? Well, hey, look it. You go after this in the same way that I've been explaining to you before. If you saw my video on the rule of 11, the rule of 11 is gold for microeconomic diagrams. You go at your situation, okay, it's microeconomics, it's going to be supply and demand graph, and you say, okay, what are the uh, 11 things that I need in order to have a good graph? Here they are. Price, currency, P1, 0, Q1, quantity, units, time frame, uh, demand one, S1, and a title. Boom. Rule of 11. Now you know you're ready to go for any, almost any microeconomic diagram. We're dealing, so in this case, we're dealing with a price ceiling. And a price ceiling is a situation where the government's gotten involved and set a maximum price, in this case, in the market of gasoline. So the original equilibrium price was P1Q1, and in any of my videos that you watch, you will see the original equilibrium price is P1Q1. Then there's an event. What's the event? Bam. The government gets involved and imp implements a ceiling at P2. Maximum prices are usually set to protect consumers, and they are normally imposed in markets where the product in question is a necessity or a, uh, uh, a merit good. In this case, we're going to be talking about gasoline. So the government's in interested in making sure that consumers can afford gasoline. So they've set a maximum price or a ceiling, right, uh, for the price of, of gasoline, which, of course, is going to be below the equilibrium price. Now, you can get tripped up really quickly in terms of ceilings and floors and maximum prices and minimum prices, because there's something strange about a ceiling being below the market equilibrium. But I'm going to tell you a little trick right here, and you're never going to forget it. Here it is. The goal, of course, of all economics is to is a free market equilibrium price quantity combination. But the government's getting involved, and it's not allowing the price to get up, bam, to where it wants to get. It goes up, and it hits the ceiling. It goes up, it hits the ceiling. It goes back up, it hits the ceiling. And so the maximum price is a price that is always below the market equilibrium price, of course, below the market equilibrium price, because that's what creates the ceiling, and you cannot get through the ceiling. Imagine yourself in your classroom wanting to get up on the roof, and you can't. Why? Because of the ceiling. What's the goal? The, ce the goal is the roof, but you can't get there. So the goal is always price quantity equilibrium, but the government's gotten involved and stopped it. And that's why a price ceiling is below the price for a um, for the market equilibrium. It's below the market equilibrium price because it's not allowing you to get back up there. Okay, so that's just a way of 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 remembering it. Now, what does that mean in the marketplace? Well, it means that the the government has now intervened, and now the that has created a shortage. If you take a look here, it's created a shortage. The original, originally, Q1 was being sold in the marketplace. At P2, look, Q3 would be demanded by the, by the consumers. But as a result of the quantity, of the, as wrong of the price ceiling, Q2 is all that suppliers are willing to supply. So there's tons of people, Q3 people, amount of people want to, or Q3 quantity of gasoline is desired in the marketplace, except producers are like, no. Sorry, not at that price. I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to provide gasoline for the price of P2. I'm only going to produce Q2 for Q P2, right? And so the government is going, wait a second. Uh, we got problems here, right? Because the shortages, 
This is a shortage. Excess demand is another way of saying shortages. And it creates problems. These shortages may lead to an emergence of a black market, an illegal market, where the product is sold, in this case gasoline, at a higher price, somewhere between the maximum price and the equilibrium price. They, this, this excess demand might also uh, create lines in developing uh, queues or developing in shops and producers start to decide what, how they're going to decide who gets the gasoline. You know, if there are only this much gasoline and this many people show up, how are you going to give it to them? You're going to give it to your friends. And it just totally subverts the whole beauty of the uh, free market, right? Where the amount of suppliers and demanders um, has this beautiful little equilibrium point here. So the government has a number of things it can do to try to eliminate the shortage, okay? Essentially, it would have two options. First, it could attempt to shift the demand curve uh, inward, right? One way of doing this would be to take the demand curve and shift it inward here, reduce demand, right? And to this equilibrium price quantity combination of P2, Q2. But if they did that, right? <laughs> this would limit the consumption of the product, which goes against the whole point of... So what are they going to do? Well, the most logical thing for them to do is to figure out a way of, sup of pushing this supply curve outward, right? To meet this demand of Q3 in the marketplace. And the way they're going to do that, of course, is the easiest way. They could do it several ways, but the easiest way is a subsidy. Okay. So this way, they could also, by the way, they could start to produce... Um, in this case, the gasoline itself, right? They increase the amount of suppliers and you're going to push the supply curve outward. Or um, another option they could do is they could release previously stored, um, in this case, gasoline, right? Of, of, of stocks, of stored goods they had somewhere. But in any event, the most logical solution is to push, figure for the government to get involved again and figure out how to push the supply curve outward, and so here's what it would look like in a cleaned up version, right? There's a subsidy in the marketplace. The government has gotten involved. It subsidized gasoline um, producers. And so now, as a result of the subsidy, the, the producers are like, hey, okay, sure, you're going to give me a subsidy per, say, gallon of gasoline? Okay, that will lower um, the factors of, that will lower and increase my ability to produce um, gasoline and the government by providing the subsidy will be able to shift the supply curve outward shift the supply curve outward so there's a new price quantity equilibrium of P2 Q3 and the, the effect of the price ceiling is now felt in that the producers are now producing more gasoline for a lower price than they were before but more importantly, because this whole idea here of the ceiling was to help consumers, and now all of these consumers who were not in the, in the market for gas, who were not buying gas before, the difference between Q1 and Q3, as shown along this demand curve, these are demanders of gasoline that weren't in the game. And now, because of the price ceiling and the subsidy, subsequent subsidy, uh, they're able to consume, they're willing and able to consume gasoline. So there you have it. There is a as succinct as possible both uh, a succinct as possible look at the effect of a price ceiling in the marketplace and a solution. And hopefully this will be helpful not only in the analysis version of an IB question and in a paper one question, but also in the evaluation. Because of course this solution, the subsidy, is something that you could suggest in the evaluation portion of a question. All right. Hope that was helpful. Talk to you soon.